What is up everybody? Welcome back to the Burndown YouTube channel. We got our patient on the operating table and if you've been following along we had a little bit of oil pressure issues. So I ran this down to a machine shop that's somewhat local we'll say and I had the guy there look at it. He is a wealth of knowledge. He's been doing it for a long long time. He's one of the like OGs if you will as far as machine shop stuff uh, in my area, my neck of the woods honestly so i showed him everything that i had including my roached oil pump which i thought it may or may not be and uh he's like bearings are good this looks good showed him the oil pump he was like this really isn't that bad and but it's not good and i'd replace it so then he came to the cam bearings he's like well we'll measure them so we measured them all out and even though they look fantastic they are all roached except the back one i believe um was okay so we're going to replace all these today. I should have done my due diligence. And the reason I have cam bearing issues is um, we roached this motor. So I have a quick video here of what happened to my engine courtesy of my toddler son. I cracked my... I hurt my motor. Oh no. I hurt my motor. Now that you get the gist of what happened, on race week um here we are and i replaced the rods and main bearings but i just looked at the cam bearings i'm like oh those are cool well they're not they're not cool so we are going to fix this and then we're going to reuse the bearings that are in here because the mains and rods that i put in were new and i didn't run it all that long we didn't do any harm no harm no foul because the pressure was low so today what we're going to do is we're going to change these out um, I'm going to show you how I do it. I got a tip uh, from my guy, so I'm going to share that with you guys as we go. And then um, that is about it. I got the tool, the proper tool tool for it. I'm going to call it the boomstick, but um, I think I got it on like Amazon, so we got that. Um, and then I've got the proper cam bearings, courtesy of War Performance. If you need cam bearings, uh, a cam, engine parts, pretty much everything LS under the sun, War Performance has you covered. So go, please check them out, support them. And they help me tremendously, and they can help you as well. So let me grab all my crap, and we'll go over what we need to get this job knocked out. All right, a little movie magic, and we got all of our supplies here that we're going to need. So I've got the cam bearing boom stick. This is a cam bearing install tool, and is specifically for an LS. I've seen different ones. Um, I like this one because you'll notice on the end there's no threads. So some of these actually thread the mandrel, this piece, on the end. This one just kind of slides in and it captures it and then you give it the old wackaroo. Um, it's nice because you can just take this off and on so it's quicker and you don't have the threat of any threads when you're sliding this dog through and you'll see um, in a little bit here um, to contact your new, nice new, new bearings that you got in place. So you need the boomstick, get a good one, LS specific, uh, BFH so you can whack the thing. These are the bearings that we're going to be throwing down. These are uh, CH23. Double check what size you need. I believe the earlier ones take a different size. This is a later block. It's aluminum. Uh, this is actually a 6.2. And then a light. I choose to use this because this is my go-to bad man pajama. But you could use whatever you want because you want to be able to see what you're doing. This is great. Hands-free. You guys know the drill. Delphi rocks. And then uh, coffee. And then a little smidgen of this guy. This is going to be our secret sauce. So, without further ado, let's get to getting on. So, first and foremost, I'll show you these, man. I mean, you can look at them, and they look perfect, right? I mean, visually, why would you take these out? Well, like I said, we measured them, and these are, I believe, over 5,000 a piece out or something crazy. So, they were my oil pressure issue, um, bar none. So... You take your boomstick, and I'm gonna knock all these out, and then there's kind of a sequence to putting them back in. So, I'll just time lapse you guys. I don't have anywhere good to stick you, but maybe we'll just throw you down over here. We will knock these out, and then we'll go over putting them in, because they go in in a particular order. So we'll go over that, but let's pull these out, and then we will get on to the install portion. <laughs> So now that we got these out, um, if you didn't watch the video, I guess technically I can explain. These go in the cam bearing, obviously, and this pushes it out. This cone centers it. 
right? So you have to hold the cone against the end. You want the bar as long as possible. So if you're taking that bearing out, you don't want to have it way over here and be whacking the thing. You want the whole rod all the way to here because that the distance will keep it nice and straight, right? And then you just get your BFH, whack the end of this while you're holding that in. So it's really not that complicated. If you can't figure that portion out on your own, uh, please have somebody else do the cam bearings for you. I'm just saying. So <laughs> here's, so these are, you know, you can see where it's kind of wiped a bit. And then I kind of kept these in order. And all, each one of these where it got wiped, bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am, right there. That's it, just this little piece. And here's the coating and then it, that's it, game over. So like I said, all of these are no good. So we'll set these somewhere. Um, we'll set them here. Then we'll make a nice necklace or something, a bracelet out of these. So I can remind myself, because I keep screwing things up. And uh, we need to not do that. So. Now that we have everything out, here is the important, importante. Watch me drop this on my foot. The important part. So, right here. So, see this big notch, this cutout. Bam, bam, bam. On every single one of these, it's going to be on this side. I'll show you. you come over to this other side as well. Clean this boy up. There you go, you got this guy, right? So what that is, that is your oil passage. So you see it comes out of here, bam, goes into there, boop, feeds dude. And then also I believe it, you know, it's all throughout the block. But installing cam bearings, you have holes. Let me show you on the old one real quick. You have multiple holes on these, right? So they need to be clocked properly. And it's confusing because there's two holes and you're like, oh my God, which one's which? You just need to line one up properly and that will give you the oiling uh, that you're looking for. So the first time I did it, I kind of freaked out because I'm like, I didn't line two up, just one. So again, you got to get that lined up. What I like to do is get a Sharpie and then mark where it is. So when you're installing the bearing, you have it clocked properly before you start pressing it in. So let me get a Sharpie. We'll mark these. And then I'm gonna go ahead and thoroughly wipe all these down, maybe squirt a little, I'll get some acetone or something. I want this nice and clean, no residue, no nothing on all of these. So let me wipe them up, clean them up, and we'll get the Sharpie, we'll put the mark on here so you can see what I was talking about. And then I will explain the order of operation, how you install these. Here's another tip. When you are cleaning these out, don't use the red rags. Don't use anything that's gonna come apart. Wipe this down, get it clean, and then use some compressed air and blow your, you know, blow stuff out. Um, you don't want to get fuzz and all kinds of junk in in that portion. And if you're using like paper towels, those things come apart pretty easy. So this is a microfiber. It doesn't really make too big of a mess. And I'm just trying to wipe everything and get it clean. I got acetone on this dog. So there we go. Something like so. So clean enough for what I'm doing. And then we'll blow it out, you know, before we really get to going on the bearings, but let me explain these real quick since we're here. Oh, look at that. Snuck one in the old box. World performance. Get your cam bearings, get your parts. Um, around the edge, they have the position and then what's stamped on the bearing. So even if somebody did the hokey pokey with these and put them where they don't go, because typically they're in the box in the order they're supposed to go in, double check, because you never know and when you're doing this, you just need to take your time. So hopefully you're not in a hurry and you're taking your time. So these are your different positions, you know, and then these are the cam bearings. Obviously three being, three being center, one and five being the ends, two and four being the second. So, you know, this is your number three. This would be a two or a four, and this would be a one or a five, right? So technically this is the back. So that would be five, one, two, three, four, and you're winning. So. Double check, again, they are stamped right there. It's probably, you probably can't see because of the glare of the light, but this one is a 23-1, which would be a one or a five. And if you look in the box, technically they should be put in the box in the order you're putting them in the engine. How about that for a pro tip, huh? So now what we'll do is we will mark this with a Sharpie. 
and then we will clock these bearings accordingly before we slam them on home. And I got one more final trick I'll show you guys or share with you guys. Um, never done it, but the guy at the machine shop gave me this little tidbit and I was like, man, that sounds awesome. So let me get my Sharpie marked this and then we'll go over the pro tip. Okay, so I actually marked all these and I put a line on it. So what I did is I made a little line here that corresponds with the oil galley and it's centered, right? And then it's the same. I don't know if you can see it, but all the way through all of these have the same oil galley cutout. So it's easy to look here. And then what I did is I just marked the hole that we were aiming to line up. And then this is the top. So if you look, when I set it against here, I've got my hole there. And then this is clocked at the top. And the reason I did that for all of these is when you get into there, you're going to be like, well, you know, if you put it in, depending on what you're doing, it's just an easy reference because you can look down at this thing when it's on the mandrel and know, okay, this guy is on this side. And if you had to reference, you could look at the edge and go, oh, and I marked this on both sides. And then you just line it up like this and you slam it on home and you know that this is going to be lined up. And then the other thing we need to do is when you're smacking them in, you need to get that hole centered with this hole. We're pretty damn close. Usually you're going to have a witness mark so you'll know where to stop driving the bearing. So you just take your time and sneak up on it. But you'll take an Allen wrench or something that's the physical size of this hole. And you can double check this. The end ones you can see, the center middle, you can't see. So you need something where you can actually physically insert it and move it around and know that you're centered. And then again, pay attention to the witness marks. You can see that there's some marks from putting bearings in and out of here, especially that one. There's like a race almost and then kind of over here. So that is the tip that I'm going to give you for that. And then the last tip is before I did this myself. So this is only, you know, like the second go around that I've done these and it's been on the same engine. Um, again, because I roached the other bearings in this, that's why we're doing this again. And if you watch people use assembly lube and, and then I've seen uh, oil to press them in. And initially when I did these, I didn't like the idea of that. I have no idea if it's going to be detrimental, but to put oil behind it to press it in seemed a little odd to me. So I talked to my guy. He said originally on these aluminum blocks like this one, I'm not sure if this applies to the steel blocks, that there looks like there's a little dab of glue or something that GM was using to hold those bearings in place. So what he started using was a little bit of Loctite. And as soon as he said that, I was like, man, that's genius because it's liquid. Um, it would facilitate a little bit of... Uh, you know, lubrication for squeezing that bad boy in there when you're smacking on it. But also when it dries, it's going to give you a little bit of a glue factor, especially if you've knocked bearings in and out of a motor, I'd imagine a couple times. I mean, I don't, I'd imagine maybe the, the bearing itself kind of compresses down a little bit, but I don't know. Like I said, I'm not some super duper machine shop guy, but if you follow along, I've got enough guys in here following um, that I'm trying to do the best that I can. And You'll know if this works or not because I'll keep making videos. We're either going to make passes and do good or <laughs> it's not going to work out. But in my brain when I heard that and he said that that's what he does, that's what I'm going with. So we're going to clean uh, those real nice. Maybe with some, uh, you know, wiping down with acetone. I want to blow all these ports out. Make sure there's no debris from my rag or anything like that. And then what we'll do is we'll put just a little tiny bit. We're not going to lather these things up. It's not like an assembly lube. But we'll just put a little bit maybe on our fingers, just enough to give it like a, a little bit of a haze. And then I would imagine majority of this is going to get squeezed out anyway when you're smacking it through. But if there is residual residue in there, um, it'll help to kind of glue that thing in place. So that's my pro tip. That's what we're going with. And then uh, you guys wish me luck. So let me set up and we'll drive the first one home and I'll show you guys how to check. And then especially on the ends, it's really visual. It's easy to see that that hole is lined up. So let me get something to go through the hole. We'll smack one in, I'll show you guys what it looks like, and then we'll time lapse and I'll beat the rest of these in. Actually, I'll beat the first three in, and then I'm gonna show you, because we have to turn it around and then uh, put the manual back through, or the mandrel back through, so I'll show you that portion, because I think that's important. So, let me uh, put one in, and then we'll keep rolling. All right, I'm starting at the back of the block, so this is the rear section. We're gonna drive the first three in, so we're gonna go backwards, so we're gonna go five, four, three, and then two, and then finally one. Um, so I've got my correct 
bearing. I verified, and I'll just go over that. I might as well, because if you're probably a beginner like me, no harm, no foul, right? So it says right here, it's a 23-1. That's position one and five. This is stamped 23-1. So we got the right Mamma Jamma. Um, we also have our marks on them. And then we're going to drive it from the inside this way. So I have a line on here. And then remember, I have my upward facing line. And then I have my line for my oil galley. So it goes just like that. The trick is we have to do it from the inside. So we got to sneak the mandrel in first. And then this slides right around the mandrel. We can line it up and then we can drive it in. So let's do that. Let's sneak the mandrel in. I cleaned all that. Make sure this guy's nice and clean. <clears throat> and then what we're gonna do is when we get it kind of lined up, we're gonna put just a dab of Loctite and then roll it around with our fingers and put it on the mandrel and then drive it on home. So sneak our mandrel in first. You got to play with it, figure out how to make it fit. It's kind of a pain sometimes. It doesn't want to go in there very good. All right, so we got it set up. I'll show you. So we got the mandrel in there, and then now we just have to load the bearing on it. And again, now you can see why the visual marks are important. Because if I have this black line up, I know that way is my oil galley. When I slide it over the mandrel, I got to just look straight down on the thing and give it some wax. Um, and then that's why I made the marks to keep track of it so we don't hopefully screw things up. So, without further ado, let me put a little of the goop on it. We'll slide it around this guy. Actually, let me put my mandrel in first, or my boomstick, right? Slide the boomstick through. So that's kind of in place. This guy is clean. We will clock it like so. See, I could have screwed up, but I have my mark and I have my galley. So we flip this boy around, bam, just like that. So I initially grabbed it and I wanted to face it the other way. So again, that's why you take your time and you make your marks and you do your reference and you triple check, right? So that's the way we're gonna go down. So I'm going to put just a little bit of this. Of course, it probably won't come out. Move it around. Try not to wipe your marks off. So that'll facilitate, like I said, it sliding, but it'll also hopefully help keep this thing where it needs to stay. So I've got that mark there, that mark there. Load the mandrel into the bearing. Okay, now we put the boomstick in place. Square everything up on this side. Like the way it looks. Let's give us some taps to drive it home, boys. Go to your new home. Okay, so the bearing is almost in place, but not quite. I can see the edge of it, so when this edge is flush, I'm gonna stop and we're gonna measure for that galley. So, a couple more wax, don't hit it like your He-Man, you know? Little finesse goes a long way. All right, we're gonna chill out right there. Oh, got a little bit more. I think we can go. Yeah, we're still pretty far back. All right, we are close, but I wanna show you guys where we're at let you know what I'm looking for so there's a line there I'm calling that a witness mark and then we got our black line we've got our oil galley 
So I have this guy, so we can check. So let's, well, don't do that. Let's see if our oil galley, sorry guys, we're struggling, I don't have a lot of room. So this is the oil galley. So see how it doesn't go in? We gotta bring it further forward because this has to be able to go in that galley plug. So here, uh, it goes in a little bit, but it should go down to that black mark. I made a reference on that too. So a few more wax, we'll take it to this witness mark and that should get buried all the way into that black mark. And life is good, gravy, right? Let me check with our pick. That is about that, it goes in. So I think, I wanna say we're good. So we're good on that one. So, like I said, my pick, it goes. See how you can bury it in there? Bam. So we are good. We are in that hole. Hello, little guy. All right, so that one's good. Let me knock these other ones in, then when we flip it around, I'll show you and we'll uh, start from the other side. So we are halfway through a cam bearing install. So we went five, four, three, and then now we're gonna go two and then one. So what you need to do is you need to spin this thing around, right? So I'm right-handed, so I like to drive from this side here. So like I said before, you wanna keep the bar as long as possible. So if you kept driving from the same side, like here, it would get really short and then you might put an angle on it and have an issue. So now that we did that, the cone is gonna rest in here. So you need to be very mindful of the cone so you don't roach this bearing. But as you can see, it's it's in. We centered this for the most part. So the cone really shouldn't be contacting and riding on that when you're beating on things. But again, just be mindful that now you got a bearing in here and bearings when you're sticking the mandrel through. So this is the time when you need to pay attention and just take your time and then let me whack those other two in there and then we will test fit a cam and hopefully it'll be glorious. So all the cam bearings are installed. I use my little pick over here to double check that all the oil galley holes are where they're supposed to be. We're good to go. So what we're gonna do now, is I'm gonna put just a little bit of lube on the cam. And we're gonna slide it in and see if we can turn it and that will let us know uh, if we did a good job and everything is aligned properly. So, slide a cam on home. See how we did. So this is the best cam, the best stage two LS cam by Matt Happel, Sloppy Mechanics. So I'm not gonna get real crazy with the lube on these cause we're just checking it, but I just don't wanna put it in there without anything on it. So I feel like that would be a bad idea. A little bit of lube, never hurt nobody, right? I get a little more juice than that, huh? Don't be stingy. Don't be stingy, dang. Got a whole fresh bottle. I'm not gonna do the lobes or anything. Um, some people don't, because it's a roller cam, but I like to put it on there when we're doing assembly. But for this test, we are good. Let me get a little handle to help me assemble this, or put it in the block, I should say. So here we go. All right, boys, two more to go. Let's see. Uno mas. We're almost there. Whoo! The eagle has landed, boys. 
Look at that. <clears throat> My hand's all mucked up. I don't have a plate on the back, so I'm going to be careful. But as you can see, you know, I do have some lube. There's a little bit of resistance um, on this guy. But yeah, we could turn it. So I would say, you know, all in all, I think that is a job complete. And it's assembly lube, so it's a little bit thicker and gummy. It wants to stick to, to things. So I'm calling that a win. Um, hopefully that was the oil pressure issue I had. What we're going to do is I'm going to assemble this. And then we're reusing these bearings. So I'll show you guys a trick uh, that I learned on that too. Because these bearings should still be good. And I want to reuse them because I'd like to get a season out of them. Um, I know a lot of machine shops or a lot of guys are like, screw that, throw them away. But again, uh, they should be good. It should have been my can bearings and I don't have money to throw away. I'd rather roach them after a season or at least a few events or something before I have to ditch them because I just can't keep buying, you know, race bearings every single time I take the turd out. Because at that point, we'll go back to stock stuff, man, because it seems to treat me a little bit better. But you guys know what to do. I hope you found this helpful. Um, make fun of me if you want for the Loctite or, you know, maybe it's a good trick, maybe it's not, but that was something that was told to me. And like I said, we're going to run with it. And in my brain, it makes sense and it seems like a good idea. So you guys know what to do. Like, subscribe, share. Until next time, I'm out.